I'm Henry Wu. I'm a urologist from the University of Sydney. I'd like to talk to you about our study that has uh, been selected as Article of the Week. We first performed a Urolift procedure in November 2005. Since then, there have been some modifications to the device, as well as the way in which we perform the procedure. This culminated in the uh, randomised control trial where the Urolift was compared to sham. What's a little bit unusual about this study is the fact that we have actually performed a crossover study, and this is something that's quite unusual in the device industry. It's nothing new in the drug industry, but this is what makes this study very special. Men who were originally allocated to have a sham procedure were all offered the opportunity to have the urolift procedure at a later date. It's interesting that these men can serve as their own controls. Or in other words, we're able to perform a matched paired analysis comparing their sham data against their post urolift data. In this graph, you see curves for the sham group as well as the crossover group and for the original group that was randomised to have the urolift procedure. And now what's very interesting is when you look at those who've crossed over, how the curves more or less are in parallel to those who were originally allocated the urolift procedure. There are two principal things that we can take from this study. Firstly, it validates the results of all the studies we've performed at this point in time using the urolift. Secondly, it provides a novel approach to clinical trials looking at medical devices which were previously in the domain of just drug studies.